Hi, this is Coach Ulysses again coming to you, teaching you how to play chess, the magic of chess. I tell you what, this is an awesome game. I hope you've been enjoying uh, how to learn how to play chess. And uh, today we're going to go over the value of the pieces and board awareness. The last video you might have heard me say board surveillance. It's all the same thing. Board awareness, board surveillance. OK. All right. So. The pawn is worth one point. The knight, three. The bishop, three as well. So always remember, knight and bishop have a value of three. The rook, five points. The queen, nine. And the king is the most important piece on the board and it is priceless. Okay. Now, you might say to me, what is the reason that the pieces have a value system to them? The pieces have a value system because it's very important that you decide on what piece you're going to capture of your opponents. And that does it make sense? You would not want to use a queen to capture a pawn that is protected by another pawn unless you see a checkmate somewhere in sight. You want to use a pawn to protect, to capture pawns or a knight or a bishop or a rook. So it's very important that you understand the value of the pieces. And then you, it'll help you make really good choices on what you want to capture and what you don't want to capture. Uh, even swaps, knights for knights, bishops for bishops, rooks for rooks, queens for queens. Those all make sense. Pawns for pawns make sense. But when you're using a, a queen to take a pawn that's already protected, not a good move. All right. OK, so now that we know the value of the pieces. Let's go over board awareness. Board awareness is extremely important, and that will determine how fast you understand chess, because chess is like putting things together in your mind and planning moves ahead, thinking of moves ahead, calculating two to three moves ahead. Um, and you're going to do that as a beginner. You're going to do that. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to play games that you play very well. And then you're going to play games that your opponent checkmates you within about three moves or four. OK, it happens to the best of us, but that's all right. We want to focus on getting better. So today I would like to put, let's say I put a knight here, right? And I put a queen here. Now, you say, Coach Ulysses, what is this about this board awareness? Well, I'm going to share with you right now because I believe your game will just go through the roof once you understand what we're doing. Let's say this is your queen. This is my knight. And it's your turn. You see that your queen, we know that the queen can go vertical, horizontal, and diagonal, the full length of the board, providing that there is nothing in its way. So here we see that the queen on this diagonal has the knight in its view. So if you wanted to use your queen to capture this knight, you must look at the squares around it, OK? Because this knight could be protected. So if you want to use this queen to come here, is there something here so that when you capture the knight, a piece comes and takes your queen? You don't want that to happen, right? Is there something over here? 
let's say, for instance, there was a rook here. And you said, oh, I'm going to just snatch my opponent's knight off the board and laugh at him or her. And they're going to say, guess what? I have the last laugh. I got your queen. That's what we're talking about. Board awareness. Board awareness. So we're going to do a couple of drills and we'll see how you do. OK. All right. Okay. Let me give him. Okay. Now, let's say this pawn in the center of the board. Let's say this is my pawn. Okay. Let's say I have the white pieces here. If I move this pawn one space forward, one space forward, your queen here could come out and capture that pawn. But now you have to look to see is it safe for my queen to come out and capture this pawn? So now you see the pawn. Now you have to look. Is there anything that can come here and take this pawn from the side? Is there anything over here that could surprise my queen if I take this pawn? Or is there anything here? So. Let's say you came out and took that pawn and you failed to look down here that that pawn was protected by this queen. You just lost your queen. See that? I'll bring this over here. Let you see something. Because there's always a trick in chess. All right? We'll put this over here. All right. Okay. Now, I'm looking at my queen. I'm looking in all the directions that it's, it's going in, right? My queen is protecting this pawn. My queen is also attacking this pawn in the corner on h7. My queen is attacking the rook. My knight could go to eight, a5. It could move to c5. It could move to d4. Or it can move behind my queen, d2 or c1 or a1. My king right now is not in a good spot. So let me give it a couple of points. Let's protect that point. Let's protect this king a little bit better. All right. I'll be, I will be giving you some beginner luck. You come down and checkmate me or something like that. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> All right. So now let's look at the black pieces. 
the queen is attacking this pawn here. It's also attacking this pawn. It's also attacking this pawn, okay? This rook is protecting this queen, right? This king is pretty safe right now, all right? Okay, so now you got a little bit of board awareness, what's going on here. Now let's say my queen is here and your rook is there. I'm looking to see, is there anything protecting it? The thought might come to my head, oh, look at that rook over there. Let's go after that rook. Sometimes you got to pause in chess because you got to say, is that rook protected? Guess what? That rook is protected by this pawn. Because if I was to come over and capture that rook with my queen, your pawn can now capture my queen. So your pieces serve an important purpose. Not only would that be a bad move, but I would be also facing checkmate and I'll show you. I come over, oh, I got your rook. Oh, no, you don't. Well, you got my rook, but I got your queen. And you take, right? Make, let's say I made a, a foolish move. Now your queen comes down. Takes my pawn because it's protected by the rook. Puts me in check. I move over. And then your queen comes and says, checkmate, game over. I just lost. Maybe a little bit of advanced stuff there, but we'll go back to the basics. Board awareness. Pawn. Okay, let's say you're playing the black pieces. I'm playing the white pieces. I'm looking at this pawn here. Not a good move because this pawn is protecting that pawn. So why would I use a piece that's worth nine points to check this king, say check, and that check is going to be as short lived as a nanosecond. In chess, you protect your pieces. You make sure that they're protected. OK. You have to look. Is that a good idea? Is it a good idea for this queen to come down and take this pawn? No. This pawn is protecting that pawn. If you were to do that, you lose your queen. Just like that. I'm going to put a queen on the board. OK, perfect example. Let's say your queen wanted to come here to put my king in check because this pawn would be protecting. This pawn here would be protecting this queen if this queen comes here to D5. 
I'll show you. This is your queen. You want to come here to D D4, excuse me. And say check. The king can't take the queen because this pawn right here behind the king is protecting the queen. But if I was over here and came here, evidently I did not see the rook here. So I say, hey, check. And you say, wrong answer. And you take my queen. I get your rook because my pawn can take back because it was protecting the queen. And now your king can take my pawn. Remember, kings can take pieces as well. If I use this bishop and say check, is anything protecting it? No, the king can take. Just that simple. Queen. I'm looking at the board. I see that my queen is on the same, this rook is on the same diagonal as my queen. I have to make sure it's safe to take that rook. Is it safe to take that rook right now? No. This bishop is on the same diagonal as this rook. So this bishop is protecting this rook. So if I came over, took that rook, bishop comes takes my queen. Let's look at the knights. Let's say I want to go either to this square, the F3 square, or the C, the C4 square. Can't go. Why can I not place my knight there? Because this knight on D2 is controlling this square on C4, and it's controlling this square on F3. So this knight right now is controlling this square here, this, this F3 square, this C4 square, it's controlling this square, B3, it's controlling the B1 square, and it's controlling the F1 square, right? So if I made a silly move, now you're looking with your knight is there anything protecting my knight? Anything? So you have to look. Is there anything coming from this direction that's protecting that knight? Is there anything coming from this direction? Is there anything on the sides of it? Is there anything coming from here? And then you find out that there's nothing protecting that knight. What we call that is a hanging piece. Any piece that is unprotected, we call hanging pieces. So now your knight just takes my knight free. Just that simple. Just that simple. Okay. Let's set up the game. Like we're going to play a real game. All right. Let's say you have the white pieces. I have the black pieces. Moving forward, 
I hope you're online trying to play somebody. Uh, I highly recommend chess.com. It is an excellent site. I also recommend this book, Bobby Fisher Teaches Chess. Very helpful. All right, the knights, we know where the knights go. All right, we have this. Pawns in the front. Okay. Now, you play if you're playing the white pieces, the white pieces go first in chess. So, and you know that any one of these pawns can move one space forward or two spaces forward from its point of origin. You can decide whichever piece you want to, whichever pawn you want to move. Or you can bring your knight out because you know that your knights can jump over pieces. So when you're playing chess, the first pieces that can come out in the game immediately are your knights because they can hop over the pieces. So let's say you wanted to bring this knight out. You know, one, two, over. Just like that. Right? Let's say I wanted to bring a knight out. One, two, over. Right? Just as that, just that simple. I see a lot of this. I'll show you what I see a lot of for beginners. For some odd reason, beginners feel like that's a good move. Wrong answer. Take it from me. Okay. It's important that you move your pawns to the center of the board. Uh, what's a good rule of thumb? Either move your pawn that's in front of your king up two spaces or your queen. Move that pawn up two spaces. Let's say you decide to move your pawn here up two spaces. Right. This pawn is attacking this square on F5 and this pawn is attacking this square on D5. So if your opponent moved directly diagonal to you, by all means, you could take that pawn. Just like that. Okay. I've seen this. Well, anytime you move the pawn in front of the king forward, you release a bishop. You release the king's bishop to come out. And look where that rook is. Bishop comes over and you lose a heavy piece right from the beginning of the game. Not good. Not a good start, right? So your opponent will take back because in chess, there's lots of clashes. Constant clashes. Pieces will come off the board, especially if you're not looking and you're aware, not aware of what's going on. Board awareness. Can this rook come down and take this point? It could, but it's not a good move. This pawn is protecting that pawn, and this rook is protecting that rook. Okay. Now, let's say you're using this rook to find a pawn that's unprotected. You have to look. The rook has to come here first and look down the B file, and then you find that that pawn there is unprotected. 
right? Now I'm protected. So let's say I made a different move. Now you can come down and take that pawn. It's going to take you two moves to use the rooks. All right. Sometimes, sometimes it's two moves. You have to move where that where that piece is, and then your next move is to attack it. Okay. So let's say I move my king up. Oh, that pawn is unprotected. You can just keep taking people's. You can keep taking your opponent's pieces as long as they're unprotected. Just keep going for it. But before you take it, board awareness. Anything protecting it around the vicinity? No, because two pawns next to each other do not protect one another. Only when they're diagonal to one another, that's when they protect each other. All right? So this is not being protected. So come over right there. All right? So now my king is now protecting this pawn. So if this rook was to take this pawn, then I would be able to take the rook. Right. Anything around it? No. That pawn is all by its lonesome. So your bishop can come in, take it. See that? That's just an example. If I push this pawn, now I'm attacking your bishop, right? I'm attacking your bishop. Is this pawn protected? Yes, it is. My king is protecting that pawn. So this bishop is worth, has a value of three. This pawn has a value of one. So if you decided to take this pawn, it wouldn't be a good move. So now this bishop would have to retreat retreat. Okay. If I push this pawn in front of you, diagonal to your pawn, now you can just take it, right? There you go. Sure. Okay. Now, I'm looking at this rook, right? Let's say I didn't watch the board and I'm looking at this rook coming to b8 so that I can come up here and threaten a checkmate, a back row mate. This is why I'm saying you should always look at the squares. So if I want to go here to B8, I need to look at this diagonal and oh my God, I find a bishop there. So if I would have did this thinking that I'm going to come here on my next move, guess what? You come out of the shadows and take my rook off the board. Well, we'll get more into board awareness next week. And then we'll, I probably will start putting up the demonstration board because I think it's gonna be more helpful to you um, going, moving forward on, and seeing the full board. Um, and I think it will be a better view for you. So moving forward, we'll do that. So I hope you had a good time today and I will see you on the next video, video seven. Have a great day.